Hello out there, it's Jacob again, and today I'm talking about a big development in the graphics card world. At the Computer Graphics Conference SIGGRAPH 2018, Nvidia has announced its next generation Turing GPU architecture. <laughs> Nvidia is describing the step up to Turing as the greatest leap since the invention of the CUDA GPU. And that's all thanks to a combination of tensor cores and RT cores, dedicated computational silicon specifically designed to make real-time ray tracing possible. The first Turing graphics cards will be the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 8000, Quadro RTX 6000, and Quadro RTX 5000, available in Q4 2018. The RTX is in a reference to NVIDIA's ray tracing platform, RTX, which provides specific ray tracing APIs and SDKs for devs and designers to make the most of NVIDIA's GPU use in these high stress tasks. After today's announcement, the platform is more important than ever. Ray tracing has been held as the holy grail of rendering for years, although it's been long out of the grasp of contemporary GPU technology. It works by tracing the path of light and how it interacts with virtual objects, which in turn allows for a much higher degree of realism than current rendering techniques and workarounds. This includes accurate shadowing, reflections, refractions, and global illumination. But NVIDIA believes it has nailed ray tracing with the Turing architecture. Its dedicated RT cores speed up ray tracing computation by 25 times over the current Pascal generation. And along with AI denoising tensor cores, NVIDIA's Turing Quadro RTX 8000 was perfectly capable of running the entirety of Epic Star Wars ray tracing demo alone. That's no small feat. When we first saw this stunning demo, it was running on a DGX station worth $70,000. Only months later, it runs on a single card, albeit a $10,000 one. The Turing GPU, named after British mathematician and computer scientist Alan Turing, features a whole new streaming multiprocessor, or SM, as well. These new core clusters add dedicated integer cores and a unified cache architecture. The top Turing GPU will feature 4,608 CUDA cores, 576 tensor cores, and take up 754 millimeters squared on the card, a considerably larger footprint than Pascal at 471 millimeters squared. Turing will also be fed data by speedy GDDR6 memory, Samsung 16 gigabit chips to be precise. The top Quadro RTX 8000 card comes with 48 gigabytes of GDDR6, the Quadro RTX 6024 gigabytes, and the Quadro RTX 5016 gigabytes. These Quadro cards also confirm NVIDIA's commitment to the Virtual Link standard. Confirmed last month, Virtual Link is a USB Type-C port designed to deliver all the power and data required for a VR experience, and NVIDIA has been working alongside Valve, Oculus, AMD, and Microsoft to implement the new standard across various hardware. But this isn't confirmation of the GeForce cards just yet. The Quadro cards, for all their technical advancements, also come with a huge price premium. $10,000 for the RTX 8000, $6,300 for the RTX 6000, and $2,300 for the RTX 5000. The considerably cheaper GeForce cards won't be quite as kitted out. But at least we have some idea of what to expect on August 20th. That's the day Nvidia will be holding its GeForce gaming celebration in Cologne, only moments before Gamescom kicks off. Nvidia is promising spectacular surprises at the event, which is almost certainly next-gen GeForce graphics cards. If it's just another NVIDIA PC monitor after all this, I'll start flipping tables. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more. Also, check back on PCGamesN.com for more gaming and hardware news, reviews, and everything else you want. Bye!